We're currently mid-May and honestly, it's complete chaos. So I'm starting this morning with a coffee and we're gonna be checking a bunch of colubrids today. Hey guys, it's Brian from MBK right here. Now today, um, we're just gonna basically just film as I go through my morning routine, um, checking out currently the corn snakes. Um, I'm, I wanna be checking out how, if there's any that have laid, if there's any that have uh, shed or whatnot. So we're gonna go through the process. I'm gonna talk to you guys as I go through everything, what I notice. I'm gonna try to showcase you a little bit of what I see. And um, it's actually really chaos. So like we're like May 21st right now. And at this time of the year, what happens is that our king snakes have started laying and they're in the middle of laying. We're actually feeding them to get them ready for a second clutch. And then we're just at the border of ovulation for the corn snakes and for them to get ready to shed and actually lay. We do have a few clutches here that go, but um, honestly, it's a little bit of chaos because some uh, you want to be able to fine tune where um, certain corn snakes have had copulations. Are they going to produce? Are they not going to produce? Am I going to keep adding the male in with the female, try to get that, that clutch? Maybe I should switch the male. So it's just a lot of information. And the only way that you can really th pull through is to do the work and spend the time with the animals. So until then, just one sip of coffee and we're going to jump right into it. So... Ooh, that was good. That was good. That's exactly what I needed. Um, I might be hot. It's getting like we're in like the in like 30 Celsius like right now here. So I'm going to be sweating today, but um, it's OK. So we're going to have a lot of fun going through this together. Now, one thing I'm going to show you guys is a little bit of how we code. So we code everything um, color coded. So we'll put like a, 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 um, a sticker if ever the female um, had copulation. We'll write if she actually had shed and whatnot. So then this female here, uh, she refused her last meals and she shed. And then also there was a copulation. So from that point on, I know that um, she is due to give eggs and she's probably showing signs of being ready. So we're not going to be putting eggs in the, um, in the, actually, is there eggs? What are the odds? There are some eggs. So I don't know if you guys can see, but we can actually see the eggs up here, uh, down here. So I'm just going to try to show a little bit of to you guys what it is that we have. So, oh, wow. And they are looking good. Actually, you know what? She still has like one more egg to go. So this is a palmetto female. <laughs> see how I just like lowered my voice as if it's going to change something. But that's how I feel like I don't want to be disturbing her. So I know that she has that. So what I'm going to do, just going to go up, pull out a little purple sticker. Basically it means that when JF comes in, so JF is the one that takes care of the colubrid breeding and the collection. So when he comes in that he knows that he has to check her out just to make sure that he goes. But we do have some awesome uh, palmetto female that have just laid. So that's really, really exciting. Now I'm just going to keep going through. One thing that I've seen here is like, you see, if I put the two stickers on the side, that means that the female like is about to, she's about to shed, but I've never seen copy population. So I want to be able to have a like information on if I don't visually see a copulation, is there more odds that these are infertile? So if I hit the second clutch, I want to make sure that maybe I switch the male and that goes on. Does that mean that the male is lazy or uh, the female is like produces slugs? Um, there's, there's a lot of different information out there. Um, I personally believe that it's more of pairing. So sometimes I just put a male and a female and it, they just don't work together. So as I switch the males, eventually I'm able to find the, the pairing that works and we do so. If ever uh, we see copulations, we know it's a good male and then the female keeps producing slugs year after year, then we know that she probably has like fertility issues and then we're going to basically just move, on, move her on to like a pet animal from that point on. So we'll just keep going at that. So what I did was that I asked um, JF to 
feed everyone yesterday because the feeding part of it, when it gets uh, crazy like this, it, it becomes really tricky to know, like, is the female gravid or not? Well, we know that usually with king snakes, completely different, they eat all the time. But with corn snakes, they will always refuse uh, their meal before um, shedding. So usually after the ovulation, they will refuse. So basically, I told them to basically just put a big X on the on the label for the female that refused eating and what we did was that we normally feed frozen thought but we wanted to try to really stimulate them so we actually tried a frozen thought at first and if they didn't we just threw in a live to see if he's going to respond so if the female just refused we know for a fact that, that she is gravid now what i'm going to do I have my red stickers. Now this female, I mean, she's massive. Like she's really thick. You can see like she's in ovulation right now. She's just like super in inflamed as if like she's eaten many, many meals. Now, the only problem with this one, you don't see any red stickers. So that means that I never seen, I've never seen copulation. So what I do is I'm gonna put two stickers, one beside each other. And then from that point on, uh, I know that we have to check her up because she's probably going to lay. But um, I want to make sure that she's going to do that. Now, as you can see here, I have two stickers, one above each other. And she's been refusing a few meals. So if I'm looking at her right now, this female is actually in shed. So this is a Okiti Scalus and she's literally in shed right now. So she will be um, shedding. And then we're going to incorporate a laying box and she's going to, she's going to then going to lay. So this female, we just have to make sure that she is, um, that she's going to shed. And once she shed, we add the bin and so on. So here we have a female. You can see she's in her, in her laying bin and we have a shed and some copulation. Refuse the meal as well. And now she's in her laying box. So we just make sure that we check her. Usually around seven to 10 days after the shed, they will lay. So from that point on, that's when we look a little bit everywhere. So this one has had that. So I put my little stickers and we just keep checking them up one after another. Same principle, populations, refuse the meal in shed. That just means that everything is gonna go they're gonna go actually crazy. So you see, this one's here is a different one. So this one has had copulation. She's had a few meals where she has eaten and then she's also shed. So the shed that she had, probably um, we feed about every three, four days uh, during the breeding season. So probably she shed about seven days ago. So that, that shed is actually telling me that it's her pre-ovulation shed. So this female is very, very important to actually add the male this week but we know that she's had copulation so even then um she'll be she'll be good she'll probably uh, retain at least the sperm even if there's no more copulation but we want to try to have another copulation as well now i do have some females that have not bred so i write second clutch on the bin now this is a blood pite side scaleless or just the blood yeah and then uh, she's she's actually going to be ready probably for a small clutch uh, at her at the second clutch. So basically, I skip the first clutch after hibernation, and then we're just going to be breeding her um, afterwards. So we're just going to keep browsing through. See, this is another one. Never seen copulations, but she is massive and in shed and completely huge huge female so what i'm gonna do and she refused her meal so we know from that point on um she's probably done and even if we miss some here and there then this this happens consistently so we know for a fact that she's probably gonna go so i'm just gonna go right through i see some ovulation she had she's like during ovulation but she's also eaten so i'm just gonna wait a little bit before doing so oh so we got some eggs now this is a tricky this is this is how it becomes chaotic so we know that it's going to become chaotic when we open a bin and we see eggs on like this the sandy chips on the substrate that means that we missed 
every sign of that female being gravid. Now, this was one of them. So she was so big and she shed and she stopped eating, but we never saw copulations. We never saw any signs of anything. And then she is currently laying right now. So there's two eggs that are out and we're just gonna leave her there, put our little purple sticker that I'm gonna get uh, to make sure to check her out. Um, first time female there, so really, really cool to see. And we're gonna pray that everything is uh, is good because she seems to have like basically laid two eggs, but she doesn't seem to be laying anymore right now. So this is one of the shitty point of breeding is that you do get females that bind. Binding is basically that she'll lay and then basically the oviduct will actually probably twist inside of her so for so many different reasons the more we put uh, genetics together and the quality of the animals is weaker they tend to have that a little bit more um, if you have sometimes maybe like too much of a younger female or an older female you might do that sometimes like they produce massive eggs for their size and it just like uh, it just like doesn't go through so these things happen i mean it's part of uh, the breeding season honestly it's like a very small percentage it, it sucks when you think of every single animal but it's very uh, normal in a breeding structure that you have certain things like that that happen so from that point on um i always try to remind myself of the percentage so the percentage being solo makes me actually like more comfortable with all with those scenario and that's how I deal with it because it is honestly sad at the same time. So just going through them again. So we have one here. Shed about to lay nothing here. So we can see like, I mean, probably in the next, um, in the next week or two, we're going to get like dozens of clutch every every day like i mean it's gonna be crazy so how many clutches um we can do well that honestly it varies so we could do probably around 300 or so clutches like total we do have about that probably like yeah probably at the at the end of the year in our colubrids total we do probably around 500 clutches so we're not we're not one of the biggest breeder i try to not breed um as much as i used to i try to just concentrate on the quality more than uh, more than anything but that's really really where we're what we're working on to try to do so we want the quality of the animals to be uh, the best from that point on you know so um, we have a good rotation we have a lot of babies growing up that we're going to be rotating in the next few years so super super interesting we have a lot of projects like over probably like in 2017 2018 we made a lot of like projects of like like double heads or triple head quad head so they're just like normal that carry like a bunch of different genes that we wanted to add to the scales well this year we're making a bunch of new stuff like that as well so it's really to produce like some new some new bloodline and some new stuff so the quality of the animals that we've produced over the years um we always wanted to make sure that um, like all the cool stuff that we've been producing and especially the scaleless corn projects is because of all those moves that we did back back then like in 2017 2018 we've been seeing the result in the past few years so now i'm just looking fast because i don't want to hold you guys up for a three hour video because it's going to take me quite a few uh, quite a few time and then as i'm talking my add just stops up it just uh, flares up and then I, I started looking at everywhere so i'm gonna have to go and look through everywhere again you see how they kind of make like that little nest like that female she's just getting ready to lay like it's really amazing she's a blood pie side she's in shed um she's just like making like that round nest there she's protecting everything so once uh, once that done then we'll once she sheds we'll add some moss and then we'll be good so in the small bins we actually like take half of the bin and add moss in the back where the the higher bins will actually put a laying box inside so guys i hope you enjoyed the video um 
I got a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna get to this and probably have, when we get like a little bit more eggs, we'll have like a egg placing video, how we actually incubate our eggs. Uh, let us know in the comment down below, like what other information are you um, looking for? If you, if you guys have any questions or whatnot, just shoot them in the comment down below and let's hope that we can actually uh, hit them up in some of the future videos. So um, until then, keep sharing your knowledge, keep sharing your passion. Uh, we love doing this. I love doing it with you guys, but you guys keep doing it in, within your uh, social group. And until then, as usual, just gonna take another sip of coffee. We start fresh and oh, it just feels so good. I need my coffee in the morning, but until then, no stress and until next time.